So thank you so much for watching VPT Cooks. I'm here with Barbara Silver from Ooh. Colchester, Vermont, <laughs> and Barry Silver, your yes. daughter from Huntington, Vermont. Right. And uh, this is a, a this recipe has some story to it. Yes, uh, this afternoon we are making my grandmother Bessie's honey cake, and her family um, were bakers in Russia, and when they came here, she brought her recipes with her. Fantastic. So when I was a little girl, I always, before Rosh Hashanah, I always baked honey cake with her. While she was in my house, I realized that she had been very ill that winter, mm -hmm. and I realized she was getting older, and I sat with her, and I had her bake, and uh -huh. I would literally grab her hand sometimes and and measure what she was using as either a glass huh. or a handful or because I needed something that I could work with so but we managed to get I managed to get several of her recipes and this one I make every single Rosh Hashanah all right well let's get started so the first thing that you start with actually is, is the, honey. the honey okay so we've and got we, honey and it seems much darker than honey well, what we did was we heated the honey, Okay. or I heated the honey, until it, it was almost to the point of boiling, and then I turned it off and let it cool a bit. And then what I did, because my grandmother always added what she called strong coffee. Right, European coffee. European-style coffee, and it took me several years, but I finally figured out um, many years ago that in, uh, at the time, a gourmet grocery store, yep. I found this instant espresso. Yes. So it means that I didn't have to make a whole pot of <laughs> no, coffee. No, it's just super cool. And I also know that Vermont Coffee Company has a uh, has like a iced coffee concentrate that works really well for this too. That would probably yeah, work. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty. Because you need cool. some. What I did was I used three teaspoons of this coffee and you can, to I mean, one you, cup. You smell the sweetness of the add. honey, but it's got that that dark coffee complexity. And it's actually, a, you have to pre-dissolve. So you okay. want either. You, you want it pre-brewed, okay, um, and then add it to the honey mixture once it's cooled, okay. And you could, you could do the honey on the stove, or we've also found that you could do it in a microwave. And Ooh. the the key to having the warm honey is that it, it gives you a thinner consistency to stir it in, so exactly. that it mixes easier. Exactly, so it mixes easier. Okay, right. okay, and it, then we get to the eggs. Okay, here. and there's actually um, four large eggs in here. Okay, and these are Vermont eggs from uh, what Shadow Cross Shadow Farms Cross down the road in yep. Colchester. Local. And basically, we're mixing these eggs so that everything's kind of incorporated. They're not uh, like just kind of half mixed, like when you make scrambled eggs right. in the morning. Yeah. That they're totally the whites and the and the yellows are totally mixed. Up. Right. And recipes will tell you mix the eggs until yep. they're light and lemon colored. Yep. And that tells you that you've got some air incorporated, and they're really, and they're light. Exactly. So it would make it easier. So those are mixed in, and I've got two teaspoons. Teaspoons or tablespoons? I think it's tablespoons. Of canola. Two tablespoons of canola oil. Right. So that goes in, and then we mix some more. And that helps incorporate, the oil helps incorporate the air. Yeah. And again, and because there is no butter. There's no so butter, there's, your... there's no milk. Right. And here's our, and I'm adding the sugar, Barry mix. So adding the sugar gradually, just a little bit at a time. Cool. And then a little vanilla. And then a teaspoon of vanilla. Yeah. And you can kind of hear it. I mean, you hear as it's dissolving that the granulated sugar, yeah. you're hearing it rub against the bowl less and less and less and less. Okay. Yeah. Now we get to doing the batter. Okay. And here, and I put it in a strainer just to in Sift case it out. Yeah. any lumps or anything like yeah. that. But I also put the dry ingredients in here is, and it's my grandmother's combination, one teaspoon of allspice and two teaspoons of cinnamon. So those baking spices, it's, so I, it's I mean just, in a way this is like it's very a coffee fragrant. and honey kind of spice cake. Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. So there's that. And I've got baking soda and baking powder. Both, yeah. And 
it's one teaspoon of baking soda and two teaspoons of baking powder. And the baking powder makes it the really fluffy right. part, and the baking soda kind of gives it like this, um, it's like this kind of funky flavor, like when you eat chocolate chip cookies, you, you taste that baking mm -hmm. soda component, mm -hmm. which I love. And I can't see which one. And you're looking for us. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so you guys know, these, uh, these measuring Thank spoons you. literally say pinch, uh, smidge, Smidgen. In, in smidgen yeah. in, in dash. Yeah. So we're trying to be very authentic with recreating <laughs> this recipe. It's just a pinch, honey. There yeah. you go. But And that's also why I think, because I asked my mom, yeah. why do you use a strainer yeah. or to sift the flour? Yeah. Because flour these days yeah. is all pre-sifted. And um, so it's not, it's not, I don't really think that it's necessary. But it's something that she has always done, and <laughs> when, I guess when you, when you, know. you have the habits, when you have the traditions, there you know, you it's, know it's, it's part it's, of the story of the food. Right, exactly, it's part and of, it helps. Yeah, you know, integrate the ingredients in a probably exactly. in a different way than it would if you just put them all in the bowl directly. Actually, um, we have no lumps, but I, when I did that one. Um, because it's been so moist and my house is on the lake, uh -huh. there were a couple of some lumps. Some clumpy clumps? The, yeah, some clumps. So it's a good thing I did sift the flour. So I'll take this. So we've got dry ingredients, flour okay. mixture, egg mixture, and honey coffee mixture. Yep. And some raisins for the very end. And that's also an optional thing. Some people don't like raisins. But we like raisins. We like raisins a lot. <laughs> Definitely. And so also, what we're you know, to do... stay with the sweetness theme. So exactly. the reason that we make um, a honey cake on Rosh Hashanah is to celebrate the Jewish New Year. Yep. And, and to symbolize the sweetness. Yep. Yeah. Our hopes for a sweet New Year. Our hopes for a sweet New Year. So what okay. we're going to do is about a third of a at a time. Okay. And you're using the mixer to really beat it in there. Do I need the mixer or should I hand mix it? What would I Grandma Bessie it. do? Yeah, what would Grandma Bessie do? She had hand mixed it. All right, here's one. With a big wooden spoon. Yeah, and she also walked to school four miles each way. Up, up, up. <laughs> up, up. And in the cold with no yeah. shoes. No, but I have to tell you, I need my liquid here. When I was doing all of this preparation, and we made lots of dishes. Yeah. I mean, we did. And she looked at me and she said, you know, you've always liked to stand by the stove yeah. and cook from the time I was very little. Uh -huh. And I said, well, Grandma, I got that from you because you always did it. And she said to me, I hated it all my life. <laughs> I'll never forget that. Breaks your heart kind of, doesn't it? No, know? it was, but she did everything so well yeah. that nobody had any indication. You know, but I, I think I think now she's probably looking from above and knowing that you're passing on those traditions. And well, we do, and yeah. we do uh, on a lot of the holidays. Yeah. We do uh, potato pancakes, yep. we do, and I do it with my grandchildren. See? Yeah, no, that's my grandfather's. It's your grandpa. Yeah. yeah. Grandpa oh, Harry. by the way, I garnered uh, <laughs> everybody that I knew that had a decent recipe. And my parents and my grandparents, uh -huh. and I had a great aunt that made wonderful chopped liver, all traditional stuff. Yeah. Because the modern stuff, all you have to do is turn on the cooking channel. <laughs> That's true. Or turn go. on VPT. Yeah. <laughs> Either there one. Oh, yeah, there were some fabulous cooking shows. So the key is, again, that we're incorporating both the wet and the dry ingredients yep. and a slowly. third at a time, yep. very slowly, yep. So. And we're done, basically. Yep, there's the last bit of the flour. Actually, I brought the cake pan that I made, that I got from my grandma. I, I, yeah. I put it back there. I, I, I saw this. Well I mean, over this 100 is, years old. <laughs> which is. Uh, and it doesn't work anymore. I discovered last Rosh Hashanah. Oh. When I ended up, when you said thin batter, yeah. I ended up with the, the, half of the honey cake batter all over the bottom of my. Yeah, but this is, yeah. I mean, this but is. But I'll, I'll keep it, you know. Like you I know? won't. No, I mean, it, it's. I wish. I, could I, I still have uh, I still have my, uh, my wife's grandmother's uh, waffle iron. Yes. You know, sometimes oh, things never right. break, you know. Yeah. And to see the, to see our kids making waffles with that is, is great. Oh yeah, right. Well, okay. that's what I'm really excited about. Is I have two kids. Yeah. Um, an 11 year old son and a 13 year old daughter, and yeah. they'll be able to see their grandma and their mom on TV making this. And you know, 
that, um, it's exciting for them. It's, yeah. it's exciting to know that the things that they love, that they grow up with. I mean, as they get older, you really start to appreciate those things. Right. I mean, I look back at all the meals my mother cooked for me, and I'm so grateful, and all the you know, the lunches my dad made for me and all the grilling and cooking we did as a family. Those are, you know, very, very you incredible wanna, things. Right. Give it okay. a little spray. Little spray. Yeah, so you want to grease. So this is a tube pan. Okay. Um, you can also use loaf pans. Okay. So like um, a bun cake pan, right? Exactly. Yeah. How long do you bake it and at what temperature do you bake it? Turn the oven on and preheat your oven okay. at 325. And in this kind of pan, It'll take about a full hour. Okay. In loaf pans, I would say it'd be about 45 minutes. Okay, and then you if you did it like volume. in a flat pan, be a little less. So basically, the, 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 the thicker oh, the pot. piece is, the longer it's going to take gonna to bake. It's going to take to bake. Okay. But I did bring, let me put this down. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, if you, I'm going to, where's the cake tester? She uses a, skewer. a wooden skewer huh. to test cake, but you could yeah. use a... Toothpick. It's just like, yeah, a, like long a bamboo wooden... skewer or something exactly. that you do, like a shish kebab or. Right. That's I find them in the supermarket. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean they're great. And basically, the, the now, concept you is that is... you pour, you, you put it in when it's, uh, when it's when you think it's cooked, and if it comes out and it's still got a bunch of goo on it, then it's, it's not cooked. And what I do with something like this is I'll test it after 50 minutes. Yep. Just to make sure. And really importantly, what, what people might not notice is the, the subtle, you're stirring the batter once it's in there to make sure the raisins are kind of evenly around it so they don't clump up in one right. place. So they do become incorporated. So that's probably Yeah, that's good. Great. Yeah. And it's not a very high rising cake. Now, do you cool it and then flip it out, or do you flip it out hot? How does it work? I cool it. Okay. Because it would be a little tough to flip it out while it's hot. So. And then when we... Wow, it looks, it's just really, it's, 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 it's dense, solid. but it, it's, yeah. it's solid, but do you mind if I cut into it? Well, please do. All right. Uh, maybe we'll all take a little piece. Yeah, if you, you notice it's got a great texture. Thanks. No, it really does. I mean, it's really, it's... Considering it's, there's no, no. butter. Or, it smells fantastic. Yeah. And it's definitely... It's a delicious cake. You really mm -hmm. taste the honey. Mm -hmm. The espresso is really nice. I mean, you don't... It's not a dominant flavor, but it's really nice. You need the coffee. I'm so. glad you wrote down Grandma Bessie's recipe. Yeah. <laughs> you want to hear about her chicken soup. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be next time. <laughs> Well, thank you guys for coming out today, and thank you for sharing this recipe from Grandma Bessie. Great. Thank you.